Hi, this is Pat Moorhead and the 6.5 is live here in Maui at the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit. It is another beautiful day here. We've had some amazing announcements over the past couple days and we're doing the debrief here. And today we're here to talk about audio. Now, I want to introduce my co-host Daniel Newman. I mean, everybody knows Dan. Do I really have to introduce you? No, but I appreciate the formalities. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, you had to always assume that there's at least like a couple of people that this is the first time they've ever seen us. That's right. And they're here to hear, hear us, right? And yes. by the way, there's a chance that they're only here to hear us. That's right. We do video and we do podcast. Yeah. So I love when I do that with the words here to hear. I know. You know and it's well, it's perfect because we are here to talk about audio. Sarah, great to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm you very excited. Great announcements. And one of the things we love about the Snapdragon Summit is that we get to get a view to the future of premium uh, devices. And, you know, the cool part is that, you know, if we look at our, at our senses, whether it's, it's eyes, it's, it's smell, uh, I don't think we spend enough time on audio, and this is why I'm so pleased to have you here today. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here, thank you. And I feel, I kind of um, feel very passionate about, about sound and, and, and kind of what we're bringing to Snapdragon with what we're doing with Snapdragon Sound. So we do um, research every year. So we, um, for the past six or seven years, we've researched um, what consumers really want to, in their audio devices. And I think um, what we find over the past couple of years is that kind of through the pandemic and even post pandemic, sign really, really matters to people. Right. They really care about it. Yeah, it came, it's my background I actually, you know, I don't tell people this often, but in college I was a DJ, I did a okay. production studio. Um, and I'm not talking about wedding, I actually produced music and, and, so, and, and what happens in your ears, you don't really realize it until it doesn't work right how important exactly. it is. And so whether you're watching, you know, a movie, you can see like how it messes with your senses when it's like dubbed or you see people speaking over or even worse, it's just bad sound. Yeah. Like, you know, why do we still like to go to a theater? Cause you, it's almost impossible to replicate that, you know, that gut rumbling sound that you, in an action movie or something. So, yeah. so it's kind of cool that you get to work on this in a little bit of a, you know, in, in the purview of everybody's device that's in their hand all day long. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very exciting and I think it's one of those things that um, so, sometimes I think like audio is forgotten about it. But as you say, when you have a bad experience, that's when, when it works well, yes. you don't think about it. But when it doesn't work, that's when you realize how important it actually is to your you know, experience, you know, whether it's watching films or gaming or, or listening to music. Well, then so. the additional emotions it can emote. I mean, when you add uh, video and audio in the overall experience, and whether it's on a phone or on a Snapdragon based PC, uh, headphones versus you know the speakers that, that that you have there it really does amplify the experience so let's dig in yeah absolutely I, I don't think any anything proves it more than the can you hear me now <laughs> campaign that went for like ever like oh my gosh like can, yes because right. the minute you, you know it's like gosh this totally is ruining my day I can't yeah. hear you um, so Sarah talk a little bit about kind of the whole evolution of you know the Snapdragon sound business talk about kind of where it is, where it's heading, and what you guys announced here at the summit. So um, I'll start with Snapdragon Sign. So um, Snapdragon Sign is something we launched a couple of years ago, and um, it's really about kind of looking at the audio chain end to end and making sure that we're optimizing at every step of the way to deliver the best audio experience, whether you are listening to music, whether you're gaming, whether you're making calls, whatever it is you're doing, and also wherever you are. So I don't know if you've ever noticed, um, like if you're using earbuds or headphones in a busy or F environment, um, you can get great quality music, but sometimes you can also experience glitches so, or audio dropouts. Um, and I, I think that's w what we've done, um, it, is being able to kind of optimize these technologies to work together across the audio chain so that you're getting very premium experiences with no interruptions, with no glitches, with no dropouts. Um, so Snapdragon Sound is all about um, ensuring premium music quality so we can deliver lossless. Um, and what we announced uh, this week is that we 
um, are also able to de deliver losses over the new LE audio standard, oh, which wow. is, is, is coming. We have added dynamic uh, spatial audio for um, with head tracking uh, for very immersive sound experiences. And we have industry leading sound to motion latency. And what that means is that you get a very natural, very immersive um, spatial audio experience. And the other thing that we have uh, um, announced this week um, in relation to Snapdragon Sound is that we've improved our latency for lag free gaming. So you're not getting video and audio that's out of sync. Um, so when we started with Snapdragon Sound, it was 89 milliseconds. We've reduced that to 48 milliseconds. And we're, you know, with every generation of Snapdragon Sound, we're committed to really continuing to improve the, the experience. So um, I really love that uh, Qualcomm is focused on experiences. Mm -hmm. I say that, but and I also respect the deep tech that goes along with it. And I think, uh, like we've seen with photography, like we've seen with gaming the ecosystem matters, right? You can't show up, and I call it bag of parts, which is here's my silicon and have a good day. Uh, here's a dev kit, uh, we'll give you tips and tricks, but you've got to build everything out. And sound uh, has an ecosystem as well. So what are you doing to expand uh, the ecosystem uh, of, of Snapdragon Sound? So we have, um, we have, Currently, I think uh, 70 OEMs and um, ODMs signed up to use the technology. Today, there are over 70 devices available, um, and it's continued. Next year, we'll see tons and tons more devices come to market. We also had a very exciting announcement this week. So, um, my good friend Nick from Bose um, uh, joined me by video on stage. Um, to talk about how Bose will be rolling out Snapdragon Sound in their Bose Quiet Comfort um, earbuds uh, with an over-the-air update um, early next year. Right. And he also talked about how they'll be bringing Snapdragon Sound to the entire product portfolio next year. So I think, you know, Bose is one of the most iconic audio brands. When sure. you think about audio, you think about Bose. And the fact that, you know, I still get goosebumps <laughs> when I talk about it. You know, it's just so exciting. And I think and um, we're, you know, the, the ecosystem is really growing and will con continue to grow. And going back to your point about the ecosystem, one thing that we do, and I don't think, I, I think still a lot of people don't realize this, is that from we've, you know, worked with Aptex and continued into Snapdragon Sound, we actually take the products before they go to mass production, take them to an IOP test lab in Taiwan, that's a Qualcomm test lab, right. and we test them to make sure that they meet our requirements for uh, audio quality, and um, whether it's music, um, low latency, and also that robustness that I talked about. And then every device that, that passes those tests, when it goes to market, it carries the Snapdragon Sound branding on device, on pop-up screens, on phones, um, so that consumers really know that they're getting, they're going to get a premium experience that just works. Um, so it's, it's, it's really very exciting. And it's something I think that, you know, back in the early days um, of Bluetooth, um, when you know you, you, Bluetooth products are great and they've you know they fulfilled a purpose, but I think when I first started working in the industry, you were never really quite sure what experience you were going to get because right. it depended on the implementation of right. the technology and the the manufacturer. You know, um, it was kind of a bit of a wild west situation, and I think. By, you know, we realized very early on that that was really crucial to making sure that every um, device that had Aptex and now with Snapdragon Sound performs the way we want it to perform, meets our standard, and it, you know, consumers know that they're going to get the best experience possible. Yeah, I think that's really important. I, I also, you know, one of the things that's happened over the last few years is, you know, a lot more meetings on our phones. Yeah. We got a lot more commercial use. We've got a huge rise in podcasting. A lot of people, you know, use mobile devices to create. Um, so you got broadcast, you got podcasting, you got, you know, meetings being done on mobile devices now. How is Snapdragon Sound focusing on, you know, helping to evolve these more commercial applications? Yeah. So, um, so I think um, with Snapdragon Sound, um, we support a technology called Aptex Voice within Snapdragon Sound. So that delivers 32 kilohertz wide band, super wide band voice call quality, um, and I think. When you're spending a lot of time on calls, people don't realize that if the if the call quality is bad, and um, you get like listener fatigue, you, you don't you don't realize it. It's something that you kind of don't know that happens. But with that difference, it just you know it it, it makes the experience more enjoyable. You might not kind of notice it or think about it, but it does really. And we have kind of research to prove that it really does matter to the overall experience. That's one of the things that you know Snapdragon Sound um, brings, and it's a noticeable difference if you think about narrow band voice compared to super wide band voice. If you've right. ever done a demo, you can really tell there's a noticeable difference. I think that. Uh 
Pat, I'm sure you, like when we were on call, sometimes when we're talking, one of us is outside and the audio quality is not because our head, you know, I actually get off the calls and I feel like, oh my God, that was so hard. Like we were on the yeah. phone for five minutes and I got like, I'm exhausted from that conversation because it was like so much like, what'd you say? And, yeah. you know, so good, you know, as I said, like it's one of those things, you know it when you don't have it and you notice a huge difference. So. Yeah. And I think as well, you know, with, with, with our new platforms um, that we announced this week, so the um, S5 and S3 Gen 2 sign platforms, um, we've um, implemented our best ANC performance ever. And that does help with calls as well um, in terms of adapting to your voice. Um, and you know transparency mode and, and just being able to kind of make that experience as seamless um, as possible. And um, if you have bad ANC, again, it's going back to that point. If yes. you have bad ANC, you kind of notice it. You can feel kind of like um, your your voice sounds weird, footsteps sound weird, things sound distorted. But the our ANC um, adapts intellig intelligently, and um, so to kind of adverse events to what's happening outside to your voice so that you're getting a very seamless um, ANC experience as well and I think you know as, as more people kind of I think the world has changed so much people are you know working on the go they're working from home they're working from Hawaii this week you know and I think it's, it's super important and um, that these things just work very seamlessly. Can you can we do a double click on uh, spatial audio and lossless yeah. audio over LE I can kind of talk about maybe the benefits and how it works. So I'll start with lossless and um, first so we um, introduced lossless technology um, last year and um, over over Snapdragon Sound um, and it's something that we are still the only solution in the world today that can deliver lossless audio over Bluetooth. So what that means is that you're hearing your music exactly as the artist intended it to be heard. So it's mathematically bit for bit exact. And how that works is that um, the, um, the technology, the technology, there are a couple of technologies work together. So Aptex Adaptive, something called Qual uh, Qualcomm Hi Bluetooth High Speed Link, and they work together to help the codec scale up to deliver um, the bandwidth needed, because Bluetooth was never designed exactly. to deliver lossless audio. And I think a lot of, there's so much kind of loss, lossless and high res content out there that we have, we all have access to from our streaming services, but I think consumers don't actually realize that, you know, when they plug their, um, or when they put their earbuds in or their headphones or whatever they're listening on, they're not getting losses, you know, losses quality. Right, right. And Bluetooth is kind of like the final link. Um, and we've been able to kind of solve that problem. And honestly, I've been working, um, I'm afraid to admit this, but um, like in Blu with Bluetooth audio for probably 15 years now, when I, first, I still can't believe that we've actually managed to do it. Right. And the other cool thing is that the technology just scales down um, in very busy RF environments so that you don't get audio dropouts or glitches. So it, it's something with other um, high quality codecs, you kind of have to go in and, and make adjustments on, on your mobile device. And, and it's not a very seamless experience for the user, but with, with the losses technology um, that we have, it, it just works without the, the consumer having to actually do anything which is great. And then I think spatial audio is one of those things, you know, it's such a cool feature and um, everyone knows about it. I think with our research this year, we find like over the past few years, we, as I said, we do this research every year and, you know, consumers are becoming much more audio savvy. And um, they, you know, a few years ago it was high res, you know, we know, now know that they want high res and lossless quality in their devices, but the must, the next kind of must have feature really is spatial. Um, and we've been able to implement that um, over Snapdragon Sound with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and our new sound platforms. And they're again optimized um, end to end across this link to work together to deliver um, spatial audio with dynamic head tracking for a very immersive experience. So um, static spatial audio, if you've ever tried it, it kind of just broadens, you know, it makes the sound feel seem right. slightly wider than it actually is. With dynamic spatial audio, the first time I ever tried dynamic spatial audio, um, I, you kind of take your earbuds out and you're like, am I still, uh, like, am I listening to earbuds? Or is, you know, because right. it's right. just such an immersive experience. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud that we've been able to, to, to kind of add it to the Snapdragon sound um, mix, because I think it's one of those things that it really is going to, again, going back to how important audio is and these experiences that we have are to consumers, they really care about them. It really does 
bring a new, new dimension um, to the whole experience and I think it's, it's very exciting. I can't wait to see it rolled out yeah. in devices next year. Yeah. Love it. You know, it's a common theme in a lot of our interviews, and you know, and we've been talking with Qualcomm for you know almost a decade. But it's solving those really hard problems that people said could never get solved, like spatial audio over LE Bluetooth. I mean, that's kind of like getting millimeter wave to work, and and sub six, and Bluetooth, and all the other in the same device. I right? was like just how? being haunted by remembering connecting my Razer phone to a, one of those little flip out Bluetooth headsets. Right. And, you know, like you never knew for sure if it was going to work. I mean, uh, we've come so far. I used to, when I first started working um, with, with um, Bluetooth technology, I used to, you know, obviously like try all the devices right. out and, and try to get my head around kind of how, you know, we like as a marketeer, we communicate this to, to, to both our customers and also to, to end users. And my litmus test was always if my mom could do it, it was a good experience. Right. So, and right. you know, now I'm like, that's great because yes. my mom, you know, you in know, her 70s can do it. We're getting to be that age now where our kids are going to do that to us. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> the, you know, we maybe are an exception, but but geez, it's been a, it's been a long time. Sarah McMurray, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at Snapdragon Summit. Thank you so much for having me, guys. That's fun. All right, everybody. Well, there you have it. Snapdragon sound. Interesting stuff. Like I said, if you've ever had that sound not work too well, you know, but so many great advancements. It was really great to have you here. All right. Hit that subscribe button. Tune in to all nine of the episodes here done at Snapdragon Summit in Hawaii, in Maui. It's not such a bad thing for yeah, us. Well, somebody had to take one for the Someone team. Someone had here, to so. do it. So we appreciate you all tuning in, but we got to say goodbye for now. We'll see you all later.